Hello. I'm a few minutes early. I always forget to shut the volume off on the computer. If you come on, or when you come on, I should say, let me know you're here so I know who's here. I'm a bit tired today. I don't know how much I'm going to get done. I'm petering out already. Still, Lobo decided to get up at 3 o'clock this morning. So I've been out of bed since 4.30. Four o'clock, four fifteen in there, and I've already done, I don't know, three loads of laundry, changed the sheets on the bed, vacuumed and cleaned my bedroom, sewed seven blocks, <laughs> fed, didn't walk the dogs at least three times today. It's been one of those days. What are you gonna do? We're early. We got three more minutes. I am tired. Really tired. We'll see. And I'm getting beat up to all heck. I don't know if you can see it, but I got scratches on this arm. I got scratches on this arm. Here, here, here. It's all from Lobo jumping. He doesn't mean to hurt me, but he got a lot, you know, his nails. He jumps up and so he's been wearing the shock collar. It just buzzes him. It doesn't even shock him. It's just a vibration. But they've been, we've been using it at night. So they put, him, put it on both him and Nola before I come home. So that when I walk in the door, because I'm the one that gets it the most, they get so excited when I get home. So that when I walk in the door, they hit the buzzer. And, you know, when he goes to jump and tell him no. So it's, it's we just started that a couple of days ago. So I'm tired of getting scratched. And as soon as they get cleaned up, he jumps on me again and I get scratched. Boomer did the same thing. So did Noah. So I know I can get it corrected. Oops, I dropped the water. I can get it corrected, but um, it just takes a little bit of time. Hi, fellas. How are you? Good. Are you sewing your blocks or are you just watching for now? Oh. That's all right. The videos will be here. I was a little bit late last week putting the video on YouTube, but it's on YouTube now. Hi, Stephanie. How are you? Yeah, it's been one of those weeks. I saw your blocks, Stephanie. They look so pretty. Oh, good. Other than being tired, you must have read. I'm assuming you read the post about Mr. Lobo getting up at three o'clock this morning. So I'm running out of steam. <laughs> Because I've been out of bed by about 4.15. So, yeah, I've already done a lot today. Not as much as I want to do. You know, I figure I'd start deglossing the kitchen cabinets today. But 
right now, I think I need a nap. <laughs> yeah, I've got all my blocks except one sewn for today. I've done three loads of laundry, vacuumed the bedroom, changed the sheets in the bedroom, walked the dogs three times. I've already done a lot. <laughs> All right, today we are stitching our third set of blocks. And like I said, I apologize. I was a little bit late putting the video on YouTube this week. Um, but it's on there this morning. Yeah, I think I deserve a nap too. My luck, I'm going to go lay down and not be able to sleep. <laughs> but we'll see. So today we are doing our floating cross blocks. So ready? Ta -da! You're going to have eight blocks in total. I have seven done. So these two are the same opposite fabrics. So we've got this one and the blue one, and I've got one more blue one to do. It's really easy. Really, really, really easy. So basically, this is your layout. You've got your four corners. You've got your center. Whatever your center is, the top and the bottom uh, rectangles are the same. And then the rest of it is the outside is all the same fabric. So it's very, very simple. How I put it together as I did, I'm going to do these two first. And there's no matching seams. Thank you, Phyllis. This is, um, I can't claim, lay any claim to this because these, this was a kit. So it's a kit that I've had for a little while that I wanted to put together. But unfortunately, if I want to sew something for me, I have to have a class because lately all my time is spent on class samples or working on machines. Not a lot of time, especially now that I'm doing all these projects around the house. It's I give them less time. So don't forget, you're going to be four different color combinations and two of each color combination. So we've got two blues, two oranges, two reds, two yellows, and there's no matching seams. So it really does not matter where you iron your seams. What I did is ironed it towards the... Um, floral so the inside edge on this one so I set my seam by prepping it I put an iron on it real quick then fold it over I've taught you guys this enough times and I always use best press especially when you're working with small pieces it just makes it so much easier to piece I saw on one of the shops that I follow, and I forget the name now, a um, bunch of her customers did this quilt in different different fabrics. And it was so cool to see um, how it looks with different fabrics. Okay. So here's the two pieces that we just did. Now I'm going to sew the corners on both ends of this. Basically, we're going to have three rows to put together, like a nine patch. If 
you guys have any questions, let me know. I'll get back to you. And I know I saw Stephanie's blocks over the first month, the first class up on the Facebook page. I'd love to see what everybody else is doing. Even if you're just doing the same fabrics or if you, I mean, if you're doing something different, that's even better. So on these, I'm gonna iron them this way with the seam going towards the corners. The only reason I'm doing that is because it will cut down on the bulk. If you do it this way, you got a little bit of a bulk, not super bulk, but a little bit of a bulky seam. So since we don't have any matching seams, there's no reason to worry about it. And I'd rather have it lay flat. This one, Stephanie, that's fine. And yet, Phyllis, are you asking about this green mat right here? You can use any fabric. The nice thing about this quilt, I think, is it really doesn't matter what fabric you use. Um, I think it's going to be beautiful no matter what you do. And Phyllis, this is the So Steady Table. And I use the grid glide. This is a little sticky mat. Um, I love the grid glide because it gives me, if I do free motion quilting, especially with rulers, it gives me a little bit, everything's all the same level. And it gives you a little bit of movement, extra movement or glide. Plus, I don't know if you can see, but it has these lines, quarter inch lines, five eighths, one inch, and it goes all the way out. So when I'm doing small enough um, half square triangles, I make sure this center line lines up with the center line on my machine. And I don't have to necessarily, if they're small enough half, uh, half square triangles, I don't draw my lines because I use the lines on the mat to make sure that I stay where I need to be. They're not too expensive. You can get them for 25 bucks. If you want one, let me know, and um, I'll send you an invoice, and we can ship it to you. I love the grid glide. You can, they do sell glide mats, which are basically the same thing, but it doesn't have this square opening. It only has a small circle for your, like, ruler foot or your free motion foot, and you have to take it off when you're done or else you'll end up ripping the mat. So that's why I really like this one, because I don't have to take it off every time I want to sew. You know me, I'm all about fun. Fun and easy. If it makes my life easy, I'm all for it. And I love gadgets. Ask me. I got all of them. I'll tell you which ones work and which ones don't. So again, I'm going to keep this piece on top. Give it a quick press and then flip up this way. And what that does is it keeps some of the bulk out of the square because this is where all your piecing is. It's called setting the seam. You just iron it over without opening it. Ugh. Sorry. You want to see my head? <laughs> so all I do is put the iron over the seam once, eat it up, and then flip it over. And I always use my best press. Phyllis, was it you that asked me about the cutting 
issues. And I did the extra video last week showing you how I cut fabric. All right, so we've put it back. Now I'm gonna sew these three together. Did you get a chance to watch the video? Okay, watch it. I did a quick little demo at the end on how I cut fabric and make sure that it's straight instead of on an angle. Let me know if you have any questions. Like I said, I just put the video on YouTube also. Um, if that's easier for you to look, watch it there. I have to figure out in my long list of things to do, how to um, get live videos on YouTube. I don't know if I have enough followers, I think, or whatever, so that we can do chats on there and I'm not having to transfer videos. Well, it's there if you need it, because that's how I teach my beginners, exactly. Now, we just sewed these two on, okay? Just like we did with the last piecing, I'm going to leave the small piece on top and set the seam so that when I flip it, the seam is going, actually, I'm sorry, I'm going to keep the big piece on top so that when we iron it, that seam goes into the center is what I did. There's no right or wrong on this. I just try to get rid of as much bulk as possible. And this block in particular is one of those blocks where it will, there's no matching seam. So it doesn't matter where your seams are. Almost done. This one's a quickie. Uh, between tomorrow, maybe if I take a nap, I'll be able to come back and cut fabric for next week's block. I don't know, either today or tomorrow. All right. So here's the set we just did. See how my seams are pressed to the center? Now, all we have to do is sew these together. Simple, simple, easy, easy. I think it's gonna, some of the blocks are a little bit more difficult. I'll be on. <laughs> Like, I'm not looking forward to the circles, the curves. That's probably the, the ones that I like the least. But I'm going to do a lot of prep work first to make sure I know what I'm doing. And I'm going to probably show you two different methods for doing those. Because I kind of like possibly... Hi, Victoria. I don't know. I'm going to have to do some prep work before I do the circles. Um, because I think I'm going to try the traditional piece in way. But I'll be honest, me and curves, unless I'm using um, the So Kind of Wonderful rulers, 
I have a hard time sewing circles without getting puckers. So I'm kind of thinking I'm going to try try it that way, but I'm also going to try it applique. So maybe I'll have some that are applique and some that are traditional. Why? Because there's no rules. I can do what I want, just like you can. So I might have two different ways of doing that. And we'll see which one we like. All right. Now we just have to iron it. And there's the back. So again, I'm ironing this one to the center. I mean, to the outside. Yeah, to the outside. It'll be a little bit less bulky that way. This is a good quilt, I think, for beginners. By the time we get to the circles, they should get a lot of experience in straight piecing under your belt. There we go. So again, we've got eight blocks. We've got, these are floating, they're called floating crosses. We have two of each color. There you go. And they pretty. So, so far we've done floating crosses. These are the chubby crosses. And the first block. I don't I don't remember what the first block was called. There you go. So we've got 10, 10, and 8. So we've already got 28 blocks done. It's so pretty. So now I have to cut the ones for next week. And I think Next week, it's simple. It's stripes. Lots of stripes. Is that what the this one's called, Stephanie? Intersection? I forgot because I don't have that paper. You're welcome, Phyllis. Anytime. I'm here. If you have any problems or questions, I'll be happy to help you out. Just post it and let me know. Thank you for joining me today. Now it's my nap time. I think I'm going to go take a nap. You too, Stephanie. Have a great day and have a good week, everybody. You're welcome, Victoria. My pleasure. Bye.